Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I told the devil, I'm not a long distance runner. <laughs> I'll live long, but I want to go and preach the gospel. Amen. 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 Tell somebody close to you, welcome to the house of God. Welcome to the house of God. Amen. Amen. We have to take off early uh, so that we can finish what we have to do. Last Wednesday, I started the first part of a, a teaching that I titled Kingdom Service. My father's business. Kingdom service, the father's business. And this evening I'm continuing with the second part, and tomorrow I hope to conclude as I give you guidelines to effective stewardship. The things that will make your service to God approved in his sight. It's not everything that we do for God that he receives and gives approval to. Our total lives are an offering to him. When you are saved and God gives you his life, the only way you can respond to God is to walk in line with his instructions and to live a life that will bring glory to his name. And that makes your life a total offering unto God. Say, my life is an offering. My life is an offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, that includes the way you live and the work you do for him. It includes your holy life because you present your body as a living sacrifice also. It includes even your thoughts, because the Bible tells us what to use our minds for, what to think about. The brain is for God. He'll put it in you, and so he can tell you what to use it for, so that you will benefit from it. Our spirit, souls, and bodies, and our substance must be offered to God, because he gave it to us, or he gave them to us. Amen. Amen. We read from the first offering examples in the book of Genesis that you are so much connected to what you offer to God. Anytime that the offering basket comes to me, I remember this same offering I'm giving is going to God. He's the one who receives it. He gives me seed and challenges me to sow it. And that thing I sow goes into his hand. He's also the God who multiplies the seed so and returns it to me in the areas of my needs. And it must be something that is worth giving to God. I don't give anything at all. As a matter of fact, I prepare my offering from the house. I don't come to God's house and during offering time, I'm thinking, how many of you know CCCC in an apple? <laughs> it's like you are trying to see which one to give to God. Some of you, when you see the green color, you say, no, that's not it. <laughs> You want the blue one because that is high power. I prepare my offering. That's what you must do. I'm going to give this to somebody who is the greatest in my life. Mm -hmm. God Almighty, the Father of all spirits. Mm -hmm. And I go and I offer in faith with the understanding that he doesn't need that money, but he's testing my heart. And if with the good heart of faith I give to him, then I open the door for him to bless me in all things. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible talks about Cain and Abel. The both of them brought offerings to God. Abel brought the firstlings of his flock, which we may call the first fruit of his flock. The first fruit is the first and the best of your. That's what God encouraged Israel to bring him, so he could also give them his best. Bible said we are the first fruit of God's creation. So as a believer, you are the best among God's creation, and you are the best. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You put your hand on your bosom and say, I'm the best of me that God ever created. I'm the best I'm of me, me that God created. You know God will never make another person like you? No, no. You may resemble, you may be twins, but you are still individual. And that's what God does. You will never make another like you, so you are peculiar. Yeah. You are special. Amen. You are unique. Amen. And like uh, a doctor, <laughs> of course, doctor will say, you are fearful me. Fearful me. And honestly, we are feared by demons if we know who we are. Yeah. So it's true. Mm. It's not talking about just your countenance. Mm. But even whatever countenance you have, mm. appreciate it. Amen. You know, God is wise. Right. When he gives you a big nose, he says, my son, I love this so much. I want you to breathe more oxygen than all the rest. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Africans, don't you see how Africans can sing when you go to America? Mm -hmm. The musicians. They say, we have picnics. Thank God. <laughs> we wanted the people who could shout.
shout his praise. So what does it say? We shout it. Woo! Don't do that. Open your, your African <laughs> We are specially named and anointed <laughs> to bring praise to God. Amen. 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 Yourself. Amen. God did not make a mistake in your creation. Amen. God said, every member of your being can't put together. I'm custom made. Custom made especially for the name. Yes. I didn't know this. And people used to tease me about my height. And I would get angry. And I couldn't respond. I was stubborn. I would call that. Also, I became a Christian and became smarter. Mm. And the same God who made the big elephant mm. made the little mouse. Mm. The one who made the blue whale, he made the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> AKA the dust you go. Now these kind of are so tiny. So tiny. How many of you know? Very small species of fish. And compared to the whale, they are so different but call them along. So when God was planning that he would come to this world, he knew what we were going to look like. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. He knew everything that get things will put in you. And he knew that one day we will call you through Jesus Christ and make you his own. So that all the good things in you can be displayed for the world to see. Say, I'm anointed. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of His God. His life is in me. His right is in me. And I'll do great things with my life. I'll do great things with my life. Amen. But uh, we spoke about two important things that Jethro told Moses to teach the people of God. And these are the two things that govern your life here on earth. I said two important things. <laughs> he said, teach the people after you receive from God how to live unto him and what kind of work they should do for God. How to live unto God and how to do service or work for him. God has expectations. Abel brought the presence of his flock and Bible says not only did God have respect for the offering itself, but it reflected on the one who gave the offering. So he had respect for the offering and also unto Abel. But unto his brother Cain, God had no respect for the offering and, the, and that affected his status before God, that God had no respect for Cain either. So your offering represents you. What you give out of your life to God represents you. I'm not talking about the offering we put in the basket, no. I'm talking about everything you offer that God's glory may be seen by men. And ministry is one of the things you must be careful to know. Ministry is service. The ability God gives you, the capacity you receive from God, that you may serve Him, that you may serve in the house of God, and that you may serve the world. Ministry is on three levels. And every Christian is expected to make sure you minister on all these three levels. I want to go there. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your ministry to God as a Christian. Your ministry to God as a Christian. When we come into the house of God, God expects us to do this. I don't know whether you have challenges about your time when you are coming to church. Some of you need healing. Amen. Many of us need healing. Amen. Amen. We come to church as if we're going to a party. We come to God's presence without walking out. We're coming, one hand is in our pocket, we are listening to the phone. And come to, we are preparing to come and do obeisance to the God of the heavens and the earth, the creator and owner of all things. We need to give him respect. We as Christians, his children must know that. It's called the fear of the Lord. That only reverence for God and his presence. How you come to church is what you are offering to God. Right from that. How do you treat the things of God? So by the time I go, the choir has almost finished. You know, with worship. What do you mean? God expects you to come to church and offer him thanksgiving. Because you survived the night. Some never rose up from their beds, but you have lived to see another day. And when you have a new day, it means it's filled with the blessings of God and his benefits. So you come to God with appreciation and thanksgiving. That's an offering. 
You bring your praises with you. So when we all gather and we offer the praise of God, He inhabits our praise. We come to worship Him for His people. We come to open our hearts that we may receive His word. That's an offering. Because I may stand here preaching, you will refuse to receive my seeds or the seeds of God, His word. But you need to respond to God. It's not what God can do, it's how we respond to God. And that ministry, that service, that's a lifestyle that God wants you to have. You must keep in your heart. God cannot work or walk with you if you don't walk in faith. If you, you don't trust Him, there's not much you can do. If you come to God, you must have confidence in Him. That whatever He has said in His Word, is going to fulfill it in your life. He's going to help you. He's going to establish you in what He's called you to do. There's a saying that God will cross over thousands and millions. To come to one person who has taken him. God is not after numbers. Like your pastor was saying, God is always looking for one person. The Bible says he called Abraham alone to be blessed. We are a church, but you must see yourself that one day we'll be given account of our lives. Mm -hmm. We are not going to do it as a church. Mm -hmm. We are going to stand as individuals and give an account of our lives. Every day I live, I look to the future. Mm -hmm. To the day when I'll have to give an account. And it's not just what I do because God reads the hearts of people. What were my motives when I said I was serving God? Mm. Or some are going to start before God and say, we did this, we did that. He said, I don't know it. Mm. Because people can preach for their own motives. Paul said it in this time because there, people can do things for their own motives. Don't think that people come to church, they all come to worship God. Mm. I know some young men, yet they have got next train. Mm. You know what they were looking for? The ladies they could marry. So during worship, that's all they are there for. They are not worshiping God. And that's why they mix up the songs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you see, it, there's a time to go after who you want to marry. But there's a time that when we gather to give worship unto God, we do it with the right heart. I'm so concerned about motives because if you don't have the right motives, God is going to find you out. Why did you do this? On the outside, people will appreciate it. But the God appreciate what you brought to him. That's why the Bible says some will be will look like they are ahead. They are the number ones. But on that day they'll be behind. Because God will read your motives. Every day of your life, question yourself. Every action you take, question yourself. Because you are not your own. I've decided. And I know it's true that I'm not, I'm, I don't have a personal life. Mm. I'm owned. So everything I do reflects God. I'm owned by God. Mm -hmm. Spirit, soul, body, mm. and my substance. Mm. As I was saying, sometimes we can't even imagine mm. that this God who owns all things had all things before he created me. Mm. He comes and he tells you, bring your tithes unto me, your substance unto me. And you can walk into his presence mm. and try to deceive him. Because you saw a pair of shoes mm. that you couldn't resist. Mm. So you follow from his mind. Mm. Sometimes we think the tithe is our money that we are giving to. Bob says the tithe is money. Mm. It's not yours. Mm. Everything indeed is his. He said, just bring me portion. Mm. <laughs> just bring me. So that I can use it and multiply it to bring you a blessing. Mm. He's testing your heart. Do you think God really needs your tithe to do what you want to do? It's for your sake. That he may open the windows of heaven. And God said, you have robbed me. The robbers started long ago in Malachi. Mm -hmm. God said, you have robbed me. You are a robber. I'm not talking about you. God for <laughs> I hope there are no robbers here. But not all robbers carry arms. Tithe robbers, they don't carry arms. <laughs> and it will affect you because God says with the confidence I have with you, as a pastor, I need to encourage you. I won't go and look in the books and find, hey, is this really his power? When you look into the books, you know that people are deceiving God. Mm. God is not deceived. So who are you deceiving? Amen? Amen. Let the church sit up. Mm. Let's understand with the wisdom of God. That God says, this will cause me to open the windows of heaven for you. That's what he wants to do. It's a transaction. It's not a transaction. And pour you out of blessing, not just money. Blessing. What about people who are dying and who are millionaires? A time comes in your life. You don't regard the money. You don't regard the son. You don't regard what people have considered you to have done. Because death is facing you. And money is used. That's how we need your life to be prepared. 
you need God to heal you. You need God to deliver you from your oppression. Okay. You sought as a man only. No. The blessing. Say the blessing. The blessing. the blessing is God's empowerment in your life that enables you to fulfill destiny. Everything is promised. The blessing causes you to possess the blessing. The blessing is not the power of the house, it's the spiritual empowerment. And God says, I'll give it to you so that all things will become possible unto you. It's good to examine your life whether you are in the faith. To see whether what I'm offering to God is acceptable. And tomorrow I'll deal with that. Whether what we've been doing is acceptable to God. Because when it comes to offering, God told us that you bring me animals that are blind, animals that are lame, and you want me to respond to you, you don't respect me. Today, I urge you, because I cannot go. bring a true tithe to the house of God. You see the thing? When you make an offering, make an offering that will challenge your faith. I can only tell you that that's what I practice since I got born again, and I've seen the hand of God. I've seen the hand of God. If you don't do that, you are afraid. That's the opposite of faith. You are afraid that if I give all this money, I won't have enough to take care of myself. That is not faith in God. That is fear in the future. We must pledge ourselves of these things if we want to see the hand of God. Hallelujah. Amen. In ministry to God, there are things we need to do. We need to walk in faith. We need to love Him. When you love God, it means that you will obey His commandment. It's easy when you love somebody. What are you love? The things you can do. Thank God we don't have mosquitoes here. But when someone is in love and he hasn't got money, he can walk to the lady he wants. Uh, he wants to marry the future. Stand behind her house with a mosquito commando. <laughs> Eating his flesh. He's like, and the woman herself knows that the place has these commandos. <laughs> because of kind of mosquitoes, they have teeth. <laughs> and they bite, they don't skip, they bite. <laughs> and see, you are there because you are the man, you want to impress your woman. And the mosquitoes are very, very bad. So today, Charlie Matoma is wrong with you. <laughs> and the lady said, because she is coming. There are mosquitoes here. Don't you feel that? Oh, we give you a crap. <laughs> <laughs> By interpretation, I spoke a tongue. I spoke a tongue and I have to interpret. By the way, say, oh, I don't feel any of that. Because they are in love. You can walk kilometers and come back. Because you love somebody. When you love somebody, it's easy to sacrifice. See, your offering, if it has no element of sacrifice, it's like a bloodless. I do it, I prepare my offering and I take extra money with me so that if the spirit moves on me, I add it. It's a bonus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the, Lord. the most difficult areas for Christians is how to handle and manage their finances. I have decided I don't own anything personal. Everything belongs to him. If he demands it, I should be ready like Abraham. I should be ready. If I really believe that everything I have belongs to God, when he demands it, I should be ready. I'm telling you how I live my personal life, my, my conviction. Yes. As a Christian, I must be ready. And whenever God is demanding something that has great sacrifice in it, know that what is returned to you is much more greater. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But God will test you because He tested Abraham. God will test you. He said, Bring to me the son that you love the most. He knew Abraham had two sons. He said, Bring me the one that you love the most and come and lay him on the altar. In those days, the heathen kings, those who were not heathen, didn't have the true God. They were offering their sons as sacrifices to idols. And God says, if these people can do that, mm. let me test what is in the heart of my servant Abraham. Because Abraham was God's partner on earth. He wouldn't do anything without consulting. And that's what, where God has placed us, to be the ones who have authority on the earth. And God will not bypass man in order to work on the earth. Because in the beginning, authority was given to man. Let them have authority. And so God stood out. That's why when he was eating the apple, God couldn't do anything. Because he had given authority to man. He couldn't intervene. Because this human body which you carry is what qualifies you to carry authority. Your body, the one you see in the mirror every day, mm. will treat it well. Mm. Spirit being without a body has no authority. That's why we can cast out demons. You must live in a body. If you don't have a body, you have to return to where the spirit came from. You have to be dispatched immediately. So there are no ghosts of the human beings hanging around. The moment you leave this body, that's death, separation. So this body is what qualifies you, as anointed as you are, to exercise authority on them. 
But when he was deceived, God told the devil, yes, you've done it. Because you know I cannot come directly in. But the day is coming. Mm. The seed of the woman mm. will be born. Mm. And then I can come and occupy that body legally. Mm. And I will give you a blow. Mm. That's why Jesus came. That's why the Holy Ghost and Mary. Prepared a body for the Christ to come and live in you so he could exercise authority. Today, mm -hmm. the light of God is in you. Mm -hmm. When God is in you, God has restored that authority that he gave to Adam. Mm -hmm. You can deal with every position mm -hmm. that is in your life. But you must have the confidence to know I'm serving the living God. I'm serving the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. You must walk in holiness and present your body as a living sacrifice. The Old Testament people offered sacrifices that were dead, dead animals. Now, when the animal is dead and you put him on the fire, it doesn't move. It doesn't move. But now we are living sacrifices. And when you are put on the altar, it's dead. And some people don't want to be dead. The moment they put you put them, they put you on the altar, you don't pop. <laughs> so we don't want to exert ourselves sacrificially for anything. It's too much. All just have to come and, and clean the church and set up place, but only a few will turn up. The women tell them that they can't make it. I'm not talking about your church. I don't know what goes in your church. I know what goes on in many churches. Sometimes I go early and chairs have to be prepared for special events. And I want to put my hand and you know, pass the pastor letter. I said, the people who should be doing it, not all of them are here. Leave me and let me do it. <laughs> and I joke and I say, when God comes to share bonus or check the yeah, chair arrangement, I'll get my portion. <laughs> but the thing is, nothing is too menial for me if it concerns the kingdom and the house of God. <laughs> when I got born again, I mean, I, I saw I had wasted 25 years of my life. So young people speaking in tongues and worshiping God. I said, where have I been? And I started to catch up. I'll go to the place where uh, the fellowship met. I didn't have a church. Straight from church, I'll go there about one o'clock. Start arranging these chairs for primary school students. Mm -hmm. So that in the evening at four, somebody will come and share the word of God for me to also leave. Mm -hmm. I'll sweep the room for little kids to join the fellowship. And I was about one of the few graduates there. But I'll do that. I didn't think I was going to be able to preach or teach. Because my tongue will not roll out well, so I was a slumberer. But I said, whatever, I have a new life. That is even enough. Just to know that I'm not going to hell, but that God has saved me to hell. I'm going to say, I never thought I would become, uh, what do you call it, a, a minister of the gospel. I just wanted to say the preacher of God. As a matter of fact, my first ministry was uh, in the children's service. You know, That's what I did. Somebody came and said, we need people to pray, to reach out to children, and I had nothing to do. Just born again. I said, my son was there, there was a lady who had such a nice voice, who led the choir. And during training, you know, with the children's ministry, you have to learn a lot of songs. And I was all there. And they were teaching us. I knew my voice was so good, could frighten people away. <laughs> so one day we were singing, I'll be mining. I was singing, oh, I was singing, very low tone. <laughs> So you will see the division in the system, you know. But when I'm with the children, I'm free. Because if they don't know, let them know. In my room, in my room, I'll gather them. Teach them these songs and Bible lessons and lead them to Christ. There's something that was called a, a wordless book. Any of you remember wordless book? Get a page of cards and use it to print the gospel. I produce some for the fellowship because I, I, I was a graphic designer. And I'll use them for the children, and they'll be excited until they wanted it every day. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> but that's what I was saying. Yes, I got even Muslim children saved. And I believe that when I got faithful in that, God gave me something else to do. So I'm going to travel a journey. Never stay in church and say, there's nothing for me to do. It's not right. Even if chairs that you have to arrange, do it. Whatever your hand finds to do in God's house. God will respect. But start from somewhere. Start from somewhere. Start from somewhere. If we all gather at the right time for service and a new person comes in, you know how they feel? These people are serious. Mm -hmm. There is something they believe in. That's why they all gathered at the start. Mm -hmm. But if they come and scan the attendance, then all that means is not for the people themselves. They don't believe what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You are serving at the same mm -hmm. That's why we have to tell the people of God, come to church on time. Mm -hmm. 
Our Father created time. And rather we are the ones. You don't go to work late. You lose your job. But when you come to God, you will come late. Tell the person next to you, it's not right. It's not, it's not right. right. Tell the person, I know that. I know that. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to you, you know that I know you. It's not right. See, God says, if I'm your father, what is my honor? I'm talking about walking with God in this life and seeing the reality and the manifestation of his glory and his power in your life. Your ministry to God, your sense, your heart, your mind, your thoughts are still on him. I've spoken about your tithes and offerings, your prayer life, and after you do that, you must look at your ministry in the house of God. Yes, I give God his due. What am I supposed to do? In his house. The Bible says we are members in particular. We are one body, members in particular. And God has placed the members of the body where they have to be. You have the, the body of a human being. I have, two arms. I have two eyes in front, not by the back. I have a nose. And I have the nose I spoke about. I have lips. All kinds of But when you see somebody's lips head to the side, it looks off. That's not where God originally planted it. He set these parts of our bodies in certain places as he has chosen to. So what you must discover, who am I in the chain? What am I so what role am I supposed to play? Things in the body are not just decorated. Your ears are functional, your muscles are functional, your lips are functional. They perform certain functions. So nobody is supposed to be decorating the church. Oh, I attend church in the in this way, but I go to kingdom life. What are you playing as a role? Especially if you come to the church, you go through the uh, discipleship, you can pray for a certain level. What are you contributing to the ministry of this church? When you go home, all you to think serious about it. Yeah? Yeah. You know, some people are not supposed to be greeted in the church. We can unroom chairs and pray over church, but they are not supposed to be greeted. <laughs> That's the thing. They don't come. And not that they <laughs> smile. And when they want to smile, ah, and, then, and, and, and a new person comes to you. And they buy both in this church. But you wanted to smile, but you didn't have it. And, uh, it's a joke, but I'm saying that some people always look good. They may be happy with their heart, but they're counting. You know? It may be alright. You know, some people have drooping eyebrows. And as an artist, when you have drooping eyebrows, it makes you look sad. It's not your making. But at least it will show you that that's not where you must start. <laughs> you must be directed. You must let God lead you somewhere. On the other hand, the anointing can make you can have drooping eyebrows, but the anointing can position. Because whatever role you are playing, God must grace you with a special ability oh, yes. to do it to the standard. Mm. It's not every every accountant who should be involved with money in the check. Some people cannot. Mm. It's too much of a tempting place. Mm. So you may be able to do all the calculations, but you should not go near mm. until you gain control over your lust for money. Mm. I'm not saying we all have weaknesses. You don't just look at your strength, you must know your weakness as well. How many of you used to read these stories about the, the Greek uh, mythologies? Like Hector and uh, Paris and uh, those people, Odysseus and, you know? Great stories of the past, of the Greeks. And there was this war between Troy. Was it Troy and Greece? Yeah. And Greece. Troy and Greece. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I think I was a very handsome prince of Troy. And he came to Greece and fell in love with a king's wife. And they looked. Either he kidnapped her or they looked. And so a program between Greece and, and Troy. It's called the Trojan War. The story about how the Greeks of Lustam and Trickery made a wooden horse and put soldiers in there. And the Trojans liked horses. So they put the soldiers in there and they, they, they just rode out to see as, as if they had left the war. And the people who liked the horse so much, they broke down part of their wall. Uh, the horse so much, they broke down part of their walls and put the thing inside. In the night, they came out and defeated the city. But Paris, who started all this, was a handsome prince. Hallelujah. Amen. He started the war. And then they have this, the Greeks had this macho man. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Hector. 
So when he went to war, whether arrow or saw, he could not pierce his body. But the city went out during the war, and Paris found him out and shot him in the heel. That small part where he was vulnerable. What is the lesson? You may be strong. You have to also for your weak faith and strengthen yourself. Don't get close to the enemy. Don't try yourself in that area. Or you know you are strong. You be money. Be, it could be women or men. Could be I heard a testimony when I was young in the faith about a woman who said she used to have driving passions of lust. The devil will try anything. So when she starts feeling that, she will lock her door and throw the key under her bed, far away. And then she starts battling with prayer and resisting until she was not. I know a boy who was a Christian, a young man. He didn't even want sisters to, to hold his hand. <laughs> Here we have, you know, we have, I don't know what happens to some people, but some of us are free. So we hug until it's normal. But some, some of us, if you know you can't hug. Because <laughs> <laughs> some will hug and for three days they are in trouble. <laughs> oh, I was speaking the truth. <laughs> Your thoughts are going down like that. <laughs> like a washing machine. <laughs> So you must be able to know yourself and not give place to the enemy. I used to have trouble with alcohol. Trouble. From the age of 12. I told you about 16 years I was drinking 11 bottles of gin. So they gave me the title to Joe Guinness. Hey. <laughs> you are, I've never been to Ireland or what, what was it? What the name? I've never been there, but they gave me the title. <laughs> Satan was destroying me. I mean, oh, come on. I could be drunk. I could be drunk. I'll go out and throw up and come back and buy more. The devil has taken over. So you know, I don't know what I have in front. What kind of liquor from the top to the bottom? When I say the bottom, you know. That's all done. You don't want to have all kinds of things. And the way when you break a cup of that alcohol, it will shoot you up. I couldn't resist that thing to feel bold. I didn't have to talk to anybody, I could just walk and laugh myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then in a certain way, that was forced me to go and pray to God and say, I'm doing wrong to that. If you save me, I'll save you very well. Suddenly somebody appeared to hold the crusade. And I went there and I've got to look back for you. Because I made a vow to God. I opened myself. In which every way you wanted to use me. And thank God, I'm serving you. So we offer everything we have to God, and we stay in line with His word. We commit ourselves to Him. We don't become perfect in a day. The Bible says God is perfect in our life. He has an end to make us like Jesus Christ, who lived for God and who served the purpose of the kingdom. His lifestyle was exemplary. So God wants us to live like Him. And he wants us to serve like him. That's why he said that in the same way the Father sent me, I sent you also. When we come to church, I said, what do you want? There are many departments in the church. But you can start another. I think, Pastor, this is what I feel I want to do. There's a great church in America. And I read one ago, you know what they do? People who are mechanics, auto mechanics, buy cars that were dysfunctional 
and put them back together and give them to families who have no cars. That was their ministry. So they were coming up with all kinds of ways. The beauticians and hairdressers got together to go mouth who was fine. And once a month or something, they would do their hair. Make them beautiful so they can come to check the company. So there's a ministry in here. Every gift you have comes in. It only means that you are not using it on yourself. You are using it to be a blessing to somebody else. God blesses us. But the blessing that comes to us and goes to us becomes a ministry. God will heal you. But if he gives you a healing anointing that you can pray for others to be healed, mm-hmm. it becomes ministry. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And he looks on that to judge you. One day, the Bible says, not only are we going to give an account of our lives to God, Romans 14, 12, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 onwards, it says that your works will be tested mm-hmm. with fire. Each man's work is going to be tested. I used to wonder, how is God going to test my work with fire? It's simple. Paul said, there's only one foundation that makes you a Christian. The Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody can change us. A foundation that has been laid in our lives, the Lord Jesus Christ. But let each man be careful what he builds upon that foundation. Because if you build with silver, or gold, or precious stones, or hay, or wood, the work will be tested by fire. Now, can you imagine if you build wood or straw and fire was the testing uh, element? They will get burned. They will disappear. But when you put silver through fire, it removes the dross and purifies. So it means that things have to survive the fire and become better when they appear on the day of judgment. There's not a single day that passes on the church with this fire. I use it as a daily guide. This thing you are doing, this thing you are saying, because God says it, every idle word that you speak, you give an account for it. And I want to be careful about my life, so I do the right thing. Every day, I'm conscious. I don't just go to places, I don't just say things, I just say, no. It's based on the will of God. But if you look at the life of Jesus, he made sure that everything he did was in God's will, and in God's time. Can you know that if his siblings did not believe in him at a certain time? Mm-hmm. If you say you have something to give, go out there for everybody to see. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, for you, every time is okay. Mm-hmm. For me, my time has not come. Mm-hmm. You don't rush into places. As a matter of fact, I don't see for COVID. Mm-hmm. I want to be used. Mm-hmm. And I want God to use me. Mm-hmm. The great man of God called Oswald Sanders, the, the old saints, I had a book of him. And he said that God will prepare you before he puts you to work. And he, he, he showed the example of how people in the central part of Africa, they are hunters. But they are not trees that give them straight branches. But they must have arrows. So what they do is that they drive pegs, a row of pegs in the ground. Mm-hmm. Then they have these branches that are a bit, you know, not straight. Mm-hmm. But they will hit it in the fire and they force it between the row of pegs. Mm-hmm. But the time it cools down, it's a bit straight. And they'll repeat the process. Then they will make sure they cut off every little thing on it that will make it. Then they will take sand with their back. And they will use it like sandpaper. They will smooth in the sticks. And finally they will rob you share by that. You are right? So he was comparing it. But then when you are prepared and ready, don't do it by yourself. Don't do anything. Consider the apostle uh, Paul. What is the greatest ministry on the earth? To bring the lost to Jesus Christ. But sometimes when he wanted to go and preach, so the Spirit said no. The Spirit said no. You don't need to be running around. You must listen. Where do I go? Sometimes you go to places and they give you a love offering. You know that that is how God wants ministers to be paid. But God can tell you that is it. Some places God said, give it back to you. Sow it back into the church. It has come to you, but you can sow it into the church. And you have to listen. Otherwise, you become like the servant of the prophet who chased the money and got that as well. Mm-hmm. You must allow yourself to be used. When the arrow is ready, there's a scripture in Isaiah. It says, he has hidden me in his quiver, in the shadow of his A quiver is a holder for arrows. And... If you struggle, because even when you feel you are ready, an arrow is not effective on its own. It has to be taken out of the quiver, fitted into a bow, directed, and then shot. Then it will accomplish something. If you struggle and you fall out of the quiver, 
you wonder why you feel so anointed, but you don't see results. God mm. gave things God to make a difference. Paul said, I saw Apollos have the water, but the one who brought the increase was God. Mm-hmm. Say, I want to be used, Lord. I want to be used, Lord. Say it again. I want to be used, Lord. Say it with me. I want, I want to be used, Lord. Because the first thing about stewardship and ministry is that you must make yourself available. First law, available. If you are not available, how am I going to use you? Whenever God needs your time, oh, I have something else to do. Whenever God, no, 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 I'm going somewhere. I have a business meeting. I have this. I have a contact. I have to. So when is God going to have time to use you? I'm available to you, O oh Lord. God's calling supersedes everything. And when you become a man of God, as a matter of fact, it's not every minister who is a man of God. So we talk about a man of God, someone who really walks with God and has the savor of Christ with him. Mm-hmm. That person has allowed himself mm-hmm. to be prepared mm-hmm. and walk with God. Mm-hmm. He's able to sacrifice something. Mm-hmm. And we don't tell our stories to everybody. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we tell it to our peers in ministry to encourage one another. Mm-hmm. I'm joking now. I have a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. But it didn't used to be like that. Mm-hmm. I look at somebody who has no care, who goes through no pain. Mm-hmm. Is the anointed. Mm-hmm. The grace to withstand. Mm-hmm. The trials. Mm-hmm. Paul said we also are men. Mm-hmm. The things you go through, the pastor faces the same challenges. Mm-hmm. So that you may be for you. Mm-hmm. A kindred spirit. But then when God has tried it, he sets him over mm-hmm. so he can direct you out of God. Mm-hmm. We are the ones God will test first. We must be prepared to face. The person God prepared for ministry must be prepared to go through. Mm-hmm. Oh, Abraham, now I know God will test your heart, your faithfulness, your commitment. These things that I'm saying are preparing you for the future. Mm-hmm. I believe in this country a revival is going to break oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And don't think you will always be sitting there listening to us as preachers. For many amongst you shall be lifted. Yeah. And the grace of God will arise upon you. You will be amazed at yourself. You look at yourself and say, is it me? Because I've said that to myself several times. Is this you? I meet with old friends to repent and to a pastor. Because they knew me. Those days one man could wear platform shoes. I work for maximum. <laughs> Amen. We also walk on six inches. Big, big bell bottoms. Big belts. I went through many years. I didn't know how to tie a knot in my tie. Because we didn't wear ties. You just tie the front of your shirt and you have things chains around your neck. Taxi flies and I think we have one house. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Six inches. I had, I used to pass through a conduct estate when I was going to work. I used to, uh, where I finally and then was the doctor's office. I had many girlfriends I'd never seen. Who could say, no, this girl says you are the boyfriend. I didn't know anybody. Because you see me Monday morning after the weekend. Check my Jackson five, my belt buttons, my chain and my, and my galley. My God. <laughs> I, was, I was in the world of my own. But there was an emptiness in my heart. Yeah. Nobody saw that. And one day I became friends with Dr. Ottebel in our workplace. The Christian son and I said, you must, you must not walk with this person. You must slide. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Did you know there was an emptiness that I also needed Christ? Mm-hmm. When I became a Christian, I came into the amazed. The Christian took Hey, you are afraid of you. We are afraid of you the way you even looked. <laughs> then I realized that I was one of them carefully. <laughs> and I became a loving brother. Mm. Because there's something in everybody. Mm. People who seem not to matter in life, who seem like they know what they are doing, they don't know what they are doing. They are the same. Mm. And you are the same here. Mm. But the one called brought you close. I used to buy beer for my brother when he was in secondary school until I discovered that he had moved from beer and moved from alcohol to other things and become addicted. And that was happening. <laughs> he finished praying and he pressed into tears mm-hmm. because the Holy Spirit had taken over. Mm-hmm. We have the same date of birth, six years old, but he entered ministry. And he also occupies mm-hmm. khakis. Mm-hmm. 
we can help. And God is not going to come to anybody because He has sent us. We are friends, you know. I don't know how many. But God expects that you can reach out to them with the message of the gospel. Many Christians don't have that confidence. Why? They haven't learned the message of the gospel. It's a message. And that message is potent. It carries its own life and power. Please come. I'm going to demonstrate something with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The message of that God has loved us and sacrifices to bring life to life. That he overcame death and is alive today to give eternal life to all people. That's the message. If a man does not receive anything at all, he must receive the gospel. Because if somebody gets the gospel today and dies, he needs to be with God. He has not said, he has no word, but as he was given to prophet or apostle or by men and only, it was given to every single member of the body. And I'm ending here. There was a time Jesus fed the people with fish and with bread. And they ate and they liked it. Because this body, when you feed it and feed it, to be your friend. So Bible said the next day Jesus took a boat and traveled for another place. And the people took boats and followed him. And when they met Jesus, you know what they said? They said, Hey, Master, that's the how did you come here? And Jesus said, Very, very. You followed me because of the fish. And the bread he knew that when they saw that they found out, they said, Master, what shall we do in the works of God? The works of God. And Jesus revealed it to what? This is the work all they believe in him, who the Father has sent. That's the greatest ministry. The ministry of salvation and eternal life through Christ. And I pray. As you look at your life, I said, when was the last time I brought somebody? If you can't preach it, when did I For those who can preach it now, will minister something. They are all around us. It doesn't cost anything to say, let's go to church. It's time to know God. He's giving eternal life to all. And I pray, pretty much, that if you do not be brought a soul to church, if one soul in a year, with all your efforts, can you imagine how this church will multiply? Have to do the whole set. Mm-hmm. And what God sees that people he gives you a bigger place mm-hmm. and you pray for children's death. Mm-hmm. I want you to make a comment. Mm-hmm. We don't have to long. I have to realize that I was just saying. Mm-hmm. It won't be long for Christ to return. Looking at events, the world is not going to remain the same. Jesus said that the night is coming when one can work. One life will come to an end. And we'll have to face God and give an account. Don't live carelessly. Don't live your life carelessly. I tell people, you know, I've been in the Bahamas, to Dr. Marlboro's conference, long ago. How many of you have been in the Bahamas? You feel like you've been in the Bahamas. It's like your, the color of your clothing. Green, blue. Clear! When, when I went to sleep, I was, I was the first of all. But my first conference, I, I tell myself, there are many pleasures that I can enjoy. But I'm not on holiday. Mm-hmm. On earth here, I'm not on holiday. Mm-hmm. Where I'm going to has much more that the world can offer. Mm-hmm. If it was the best, God wouldn't destroy this and create a new heaven and a new earth. Mm-hmm. So all the things I haven't been able to do, which I would have desired, I have eternity in front of me. But let me see what is important now. Let me live that life. That's what let people say. God will change that life. Let me do that ministry, not bring to eternal life of people. Let me tell people to their destiny. That is ministry. And everybody who is in this house, as an elder, as a leader, you yourself must discover how to fulfill your work of destiny. So that you can teach others. When Jesus needs to be directed, his students will be helped. In spite of what they heard about his death, when you were being dedicated, Senior said things about it, they were astonished mm-hmm. at what was said. Yes, so when, when it came to destiny, they couldn't help it. Mm-hmm. And Jesus had to go to the temple. So in the church, this is where we keep the young ones mm-hmm. to begin to focus on destiny. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. I'm in love with it. Developing people, fulfilling destinies. You must catch the revelation your pastor had mm-hmm. when he, he has a permission statement. Mm-hmm. You must catch it. That's what life is about. Mm-hmm. We are citizens of heaven mm-hmm. who will be dispatched to the earth mm-hmm. to fulfill our assignment for God. We are not here for leisure. 
we are healed. And you'll be blessed as you consider these thoughts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There's much I have to know and much I have to do. Talk to God. Talk to God. Ask for change. Everything is already yours. Don't go asking for little, little, petty things. Don't be distracted. Seek for the things that matter in the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added to you. I pray that your life will take a turn. That the Holy Spirit will engage with your spirit and teach you and instruct you and inspire you to follow destiny. That you'll be one who holds ministry in your hands, who will do service in the house of God. Let the light of your life, your life so shine that people will know that there's a God who lives in you. May you bring change to this assembly of which God has made your life. Whatever role you play, may you do it excellently. Because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of excellence is upon you. May you never forget that one day you stand before God. And that God will say, Thou good and faithful said, because of what you've done, I will reward you abundantly. Live for a purpose. Live a life of meaning. Encourage others to be That God is with you. And you will not forget your labor of love. Even as you have set yourself to set. May you be blessed. May your needs be met. May the angels minister to you according to your needs. May they lift the burdens in your way. May they plan the path of your life. May the obstructions of the devil be destroyed. May you have joy and peace and not sorrow and anxiety. May you be called one who carried the burden of the Lord and did as well. I pray for you that life will be pleasant as you said. In Jesus' mighty name. And let the people of God say Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Pastor Edwin Doko, God will you bless you. Amen. For receiving of God and giving unto us. Brothers and sisters, it is my prayer. That as we heard from God, that we go out there and be doers of the word. Many of the things that we run after today will not follow us to eternity. May we get our perspective right, devote ourselves to the kingdom sense. In so doing, whatever God desires to do within this earth among humanity. Find vessels that are available to be used. It is my prayer that you be one of the vessels, yeah. vessels of honor to his praise and to his glory. God richly bless you.